Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Millie's Bayside Chats, where we are live streaming to hopefully bring some calm to the chaos of your PCS or not PCS, <laughs> depending on where you are right now in the timeline. Uh, my name is Kelly Artis. I am your host, and I am really excited to be here with you today with a dear friend of mine. So we'll, we'll introduce her in just a second, but I want to do a quick check in. How's everybody doing? You guys holding up? Um, hopefully this door stays shut throughout today's broadcast. We'll see about that. <laughs> it's kind of a crapshoot these days. So if my children make an appearance, just know that I am doing this thing with y'all <laughs> as well. Um, okay, a little bit of housekeeping. If you guys want to throw comments in the stream, I encourage and applaud and adore that. So go ahead, drop where you're watching from in the comments so we can say hello to you properly and add you to the conversation. If you have questions for our guests or for me or about life in general, or if you just want to know what day it is, you can ask that in the comments too. We'll figure that out together. Okay, really quickly, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor and friends at Boldly. Boldly is a premium subscription staffing service uh, that you can apply to and work with as a W-2 employee. And guess what that means? That means remote work for you. Uh, and you can social distance and follow all the regulations and still be a valued employee with Boldly. They have positions like uh, virtual assisting, project managers, and so much more. We'll talk about them later. But thank you to Boldly for supporting this series of Millie's Bayside Chats. All right. Well, without any further ado, you guys have already kind of gotten the tease and, and may know this lovely lady. I'm going to bring my friend Bianca Stokowski on. <gasps> Bonus points for getting your name right. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> How are you, friends? I'm good. Oh. I miss people's faces. How are you? I miss your face, too. Well, hopefully people will get the benefit of seeing you virtually. So if you know and love Bianca, say what's up in the comments. Hey, I see Marla watching from McDill Air Force Base. Hey, Marla. Uh, we've got Jennifer Pascal in Rhode Island. Hey, Jen. What day is it? She says, for real, you guys. <laughs> I think it's Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday, the 85th of March, or no, yes. it's April now. So <laughs> here we go. We're going to do this together. <laughs> Bianca, can you tell our friends at Millie just a little bit about yourself and your background? Um, and then I'll gush on you a little bit later. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm currently the managing editor at AmeriForce Media. We publish soon to be three magazines, um, Military Families Magazine, Reserve and National Guard. And in June, we are debuting a brand new magazine in partnership with the Military Influencer Woo! Conference. Yay! Uh, we like to lean on the talent from the military community to put together these products online and in print. Aside from that, I am a mom of three. 
three boys and one little puppy girl who is not so little anymore. <laughs> and my husband, um, he just recently retired from the Marine Corps. So I had the opportunity up close view of the Marine Corps for 20 years. And now we live near a Navy base. That's awesome. So Bianca and I met, you guys were still in. Yeah, you're down at Camp Lejeune? It's yeah, it's, it's only been about a year since okay. he retired. You got so much going on. Military mama too, huh? Yes. Yeah. So my son recently uh, married an airman. Uh, so she uh, joined the Air Force late last year, and we got to go to the graduation and the whole shebang. And they had their first opponents move, which happened during all this current crazy chaos going on. Yeah. So um, I think it from his perspective, and because he's a male spouse, um, he he's been trying to tell me that things aren't quite like the experience was for me. So I'm, I'm trying to convince him to get involved. And, you know, he's like, I don't really want to go to a spouse club meeting. So um, we actually, it, it inspired a, a story in our recent issue. Mm -hmm. We interviewed this awesome group called the Dependa Bros. I saw that. That was cool. Yeah. Ramstein, they do things their own way. Um, and then they have sort of, like a uh, equivalent group in Okinawa called the man dependents. So <laughs> our male spouses are very creative. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, hey, Keisha, Keisha's watching. I'll see you in just a little bit, Keisha, over in uh, the virtual, wait a minute, I'm gonna mess it up. Male spouse on virtual summit. <laughs> Feel hey, free to throw that link in the comments, Keisha. We'll we'll try to encourage folks to come over there. I'll be doing a, a session later on for a free virtual uh, live stream event that they're putting on. Kudos to you guys. Um, hey, Janet. Janet Sanchez says hi. Hugs to both of you. I think we have some in-fan folks showing up. Awesome. Welcome. Um, oh, well, so while we're plugging things, have you done, did you do trivia last night? Did I see you at trivia for in-fan? I I didn't. So we're in the middle of loading our May issue, uh, which we kind of had to pivot uh, some of the contents last minute, but I'm going to catch up on it. And I saw they have a story chat this morning with Miss USA, which was really exciting. It actually might be now. Sorry, I'm fan. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they have a whole, go head over to their page too, you guys, and we'll drop all these links for you later. Uh, they're doing a lot to get uh, folks connected. Uh, so I don't know about you, Bianca, but I have been jumping on every publicly posted yes. zoom call I can find I don't even care what it's about like I'm just like, yeah human interaction any way I could get it people hi I'm Kelly like one yeah. day like it was like a private coaching call that I think he accidentally posted publicly and I jumped in on it I was like hey everybody. I am so grateful for technology right now I'm a true extrovert mm. so working from home is hard for me huh. because I like that human interaction yeah um so all these creative ways that businesses are using to still connect with their audience, they're, they're perfect for yeah. me to get me right now. It's, it's incredible. And honestly, I think I've read somewhere, don't quote me on this. I may have to look it up and fact check, but I feel like I read somewhere that your brain recognizes a human face on a screen in this, in a similar mm -hmm. way as it does in person. Um, oh, so some wow. of the same like connection uh, hormones mm -hmm. that are available kind of still happen even on this virtual format. So you guys don't be shy. Oh, great. Get in the Zoom yeah. calls, FaceTime with friends. Like I don't accept phone calls anymore. Like I make them FaceTime me, <laughs> just because. Which is funny because yeah. normally I don't do that at all. But now I'm like, nope, I need a face. So I was telling someone yesterday um, that this time to me feels like everyone really truly is in the same boat. You know, after 9/11, we felt that where it was the military was experiencing one thing, a civilian community was experiencing another. Mm -hmm. But now our whole country really, we're all, no matter where you live, uh, what you do in life, you're going through the same experience. You're going through the same hardships, the peaks and the valleys. I have some parts of my day where I'm like, this is okay, I can handle this new routine. You know, we're walking the dog. The kids are wanting to play basketball and talk to me now. Um, and then I hit a point of the day, like where I feel like down and sad and almost trapped, um, mm. because I can't go do all of those comfort things that I really look forward to doing with simple things. It is true. I feel like it comes in waves for me too. Like, you know, obviously this is a, a peak of my day. So you guys are getting <laughs> all the smiles and like I'm on, right. But then there are definitely moments where you're just like, Oh, this is hard. Uh, staying up late to do work. Uh, I, I have the opportunity to still work, which of which, you know, I'm super grateful, but also like, 
homeschool and work right. are two totally right. separate things. You cannot commingle. <laughs> if you can, let me yeah. know how, because I missed that. I missed that. <laughs> um, so <laughs> let's see. Um, right. How how are things where you are? Like, are you guys, you guys are on lockdown now or stay in, stay home? We are. Okay. Uh, we're, we're living in Maryland. We're near um, Naval Station, Pax River. Mm. So our governor has been super aggressive in the mm. things he did. Um, but he did put a stay at home order in place just two days ago uh, because we're really connected with Virginia and DC. Yeah. And so they were starting to see cases increase. My husband works um, for the DOD as a civilian now. So they transitioned him to telework. Mm. Um, and we've really kind of made this conscious decision that the only thing we're leaving this house for, you know, one of us typically may is to do a grocery run. Yeah. Um, because I'm, I feel like there's so much conflicting information about what keeps you safe, what to avoid, what's okay to do that. We're just like, rather than take any chances, yeah. um, you know, this is just how it's going to have to be. And I, I do feel like military life really has prepared us for this, not just adapting and overcome type thing, mm -hmm. but uh, disappointment because, <laughs> you know, oh, oh, my husband's coming home on this day. Let me get everything ready. And then it transitions to two weeks later, he's coming home. Yeah. Uh, or these really unorthodox situations. And my kids have really even been with, go with the flow. Mm -hmm. And and I think we're just kind of used to that. And uh, we have a mentality that can persevere. Not to say that it's easy, because this is the strangest thing I've ever encountered in my lifetime. Um, and my heart breaks for those military families who were waiting for a homecoming mm -hmm. date and then got extended. Um, I can't even imagine being stuck in your house. And then, and so you don't have your support system. You can't go meet up with other spouses. And then on top of that, you find out your service member is going to have to stay somewhere for an unknown amount of time. Um, it me, I'm in that boat. I'm right there with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that. it's tricky. It's tricky. Um, but I think I agree with you. I think, and I, I love what you said earlier about like, this not just being like a military thing mm -hmm. challenge like it is and I think we have a lot to teach the civilian world too and not to sound like self-righteous or whatever but you're totally right I mean we're like we're okay with not planning you know and just kind right. of being indefinitely on hold and like I told someone the other day like it's almost like we're just always holding our breath um right so maybe we have good lung capacity we'll put it that way <laughs> we're, we'll teach you guys how to breathe <laughs> so no how to be cool. oh. and 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 also sitting on the sidelines and watching the creativity. Um, mm -hmm. Our neighbors, you know, they did this bear hunt for the kids. So we all uh, like put teddy bears in our windows so all the little kids could go through. Um, the local restaurants transitioned into food trucks yep. within days yep. of this happening. And they're taking turns parking in the neighborhoods. And there's just this really sense of, um, you know, we're in this together type attitude. We all still want to support our businesses. Our local gym gave away all their spin bikes so people could still exercise wow. and they're getting. That's yeah. awesome. I've heard of like, I know so, CrossFit gyms are kind of doling out like kettlebells. Yeah. That's really cool. Oh, entrepreneurs are going to be the ones that get yeah. us through this with our sanity because they're really kind yeah. of. And they're probably hurting, uh, you know, where, whereas I telework, my husband can telework. If you own a restaurant or something, you have to quickly think on your feet. Um, so shout out to all the small business owners out there yeah. who are pivoting their plans and, and still able to deliver us some sense of normalcy. That's part of what I'm going to be talking about later on today is how to like, you're going to have to still deliver something and you're going to have to still connect with right. your customers so you got to get online. So what can you do online? And I think it is so fun to watch. I mean, think about all the artists and musicians, you know, that are doing like at home right. concerts. And one of my favorite things right now are the late show guys doing their shows. <laughs> uh, Jimmy yeah. Fallon from his hallway with his kids <laughs> falling all over yeah. him. He yeah, should never go like, back to the old yeah. format. Like that should just be the yeah. show. <laughs> it, yeah. it's very human too to see yeah. that part of their life um and that's what i mean also a lot of people complain you know celebrities they don't understand things because they're so rich well they actually we're all on an equal playing field right now right? right so um so so i think this will go down future when we can reflect 
back on it and as a really unique time in our mm-hmm. history. And it kind of thinks that we have to be a part of this chapter, but um, I think a lot of lessons will prevail from it. Yeah. Number one thing that I'm learning is control what you can control, right? Yeah. Like staying home, you can control. So the number one way to not get sick and not worry and not get yeah. others sick is by staying home. Okay. So box done. Stay home, you guys. Do your part. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. Well, so we actually did have a plan for <laughs> the show today. Um, but seriously, guys, if you're watching and you have comments or questions, uh, go ahead and throw them in. I actually have a couple of more like off topic questions for Bianca and then we'll, we'll dip into what we had planned on talking about. Um, but I actually, right now I see several of you watching. Have you done a bear hunt or a sidewalk chalk art? Have your kids like fed the community in that way? Um, allowed them to artistically express themselves. I'm seeing it all over Pinterest. And we actually did a window in our house, have this big picture window on the front porch. And we did a huge little drawing with a rainbow. There's a rainbow hunt in our neighborhood. So if you have photos of that and want to share some joy with our followers and friends today, drop them down below in the comments. We'd love to see that. Um, Okay, so my question, actually, you as um, the editor of Military Families, and we were chatting earlier earlier, we're having the same experience. Most of our content doesn't mm-hmm. feel right right now. Right. Um, everything <laughs> that we we have set up at Millie is gearing. This is like, this is our uphill. Like PCS yeah. is happening right now is literally yeah. usually when we're telling people, okay, contact that realtor. These are the kind of questions you ask your realtor. This is why you need to vet for this and that. And this is what you ask for a virtual tour. And if you don't recon, hire a scout. Our scouts have actually paused their services right now. Uh, We want to make sure they're safe and healthy. Like there's just so much that we're having a shift to consider. Um, I would assume that your content also (laughs) has had a few (laughs) hiccups. Would you mind sharing? Many, everyone. Yeah. How are Um, you doing? Because we're a print magazine, we plan our our content about five months out um, because of the print process. So uh, when we got together to plan this, it was last July and our March issue debuted and it was a travel issue. Um, And as I'm, you know, thinking of transitioning the print onto online to connect with our audience. I'm like, none of these articles are relevant because people can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, So we had a story about exploring Road of Spain. Um, There was a story about a ferry up in New Jersey where uh, they offer discounts to the military and they take you around to see sites in the mid-Atlantic. Our cover family is a family based in the UK who globe trot with their toddler. Oh, um, and every time I was like, okay, people still probably want to break from coronavirus coverage. Let me still put these articles up. It felt irrelevant. It felt so irre- irrelevant. So yeah. we've really stopped. And I figure we'll resume doing that when people can start doing normal things in life again. But every one of our covers um, has in some way been trolled by coronavirus. Um, <laughs> Our April cover, it just came out yesterday. I love it. It's a gorgeous cover. Uh, We're honoring military kids, of course, Mm -hmm. but not all military kids are little kids. Um, So on our cover is Trey McBride. His dad is currently serving in the Army still. He's a wide receiver on the LA Wildcats. The XFL was canceled as part of what's going on. Um, But his career is still worth reading about because He grew up just like every other military kid, and he persevered to um, develop a professional football career, and he's doing his thing. And so it it just, it's been one thing after the other. And our sister publication has been keeping us very busy because it's the Reserve and National Guard. And as everyone knows, you know, while we're sheltering in place, over 15,000 guardsmen from every state and territory in Washington, D.C., um, they're coming to work every day to do a range of, of duties. So shout out to our national guard families who rarely get, um, the attention they deserve for the types of sacrifices their households have to do. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I just want to underscore and encourage you all watching, uh, I see Jen drop the link for us. Thank you, Jen, uh, for that article. Um, please, even though it's, 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 it's a weird time. Please go and celebrate uh, these folks, yeah. these families, this this athlete. Um, you know, I know 
having worked with Bianca professionally, they do such a great job interviewing their their stories, their features. You know, they do a really awesome job making sure that the photos are amazing and perfect and they're super generous with all everything that they do. And those families and those stories still very much deserve to be celebrated. So take a break from the Corona <laughs> stuff. Pretend. <laughs> Just pretend, yes, meditate, <laughs> pretend like you're in Rota, Spain, <laughs> um, and celebrate yeah. the authors that are that are writing these fantastic pieces for you, and then also the families that they're focusing on. Um, things will come, and things will get back to normal soon. Um, and I know that some people are looking for an escape. So Bianca, keep doing what you're doing. It's important. We need it. <laughs> we need the good stories. Yeah, we we uh, one of our business decisions we've made. I have been processing our invoices quicker to make sure that we're paying people faster because if anyone's household is like mine, I have been spending an insane amount of money on groceries. (laughs) Um, I'm not going to tell you what I've been spending money on, but the mailman just laughs (laughs) at me every day. He's like, what is it this time? I'm like, I don't know. Could be a pressure washer. Could be a bicycle. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. I'm fortunate that we have not yet. We're, we're not at a place where we're having to scale back. Um, our freelancers are the majority of our workforce and they're all spouses, veterans, active duty service members. We have a military mom who writes for us. Um, freelance opportunities are on a continuous basis with us and we just want to make sure we continue. We actually worked with boldly, um, because they're, they are wise enough to forward think about how these remote career opportunities can help you sustain all of the lifestyle difficulties, uh, you know, moving deployments and now coronavirus. Mm -hmm. If you are fortunate enough to have gotten into a remote career, not only are you likely still able to generate income for yourself, but you probably are really good at setting up a routine um, when things are being thrown at you. So um, shout out to Boldly for what they do. So I was going to take an an ad break, but I think you just nailed that for me. (laughs) Oh my God, a guest ad break. Yo, that's awesome. Yeah. No, uh, so what I, and if you guys have missed our, you know, our gushing on Boldly before, what I think is so cool, Sandra Lewis, the CEO founder, um, actually came to this realization all on her own before it was like, you know, the cool thing to do to promote military spouse employment and opportunities where, you know, there's some great organizations going around and teaching companies and organizations like, hey, we're valuable and this is why. She realized it all on her own. Like she noticed a consistent pattern with some of the folks on her workforce and said, hey, what do you guys have in common? Turns out they were all military spouses. She's like, I need more of you. You're amazing. You're exactly what we need. Um, So they, again, are actively recruiting for military spouse talent. Uh, Go to boldly.com slash milsojobs for more information. And we'll drop that link in the comments for you guys. Thanks, Bianca. You make my job easy. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of remote work. My yeah. job, I started this job at Camp Lejeune and our headquarters is in Chicago and it moved with me to Maryland. Yep. So, um, and you know, I didn't have to skip a beat on anything. It worked around. I had the movers come and things like that and they were completely flexible. I think it's really important to communicate with your employer too yeah. on what's happening with your life. Yeah. Um, I think, that, that to me is the number one thing. And I think one thing coronavirus will do is it, it will help businesses see telework is a possibility for their workforce. Um, what may have seemed impossible. Uh, so my husband, um, I mentioned he worked for the DOD. Prior to this, uh, <laughs> full-time telework was a no-no. And now they've learned, you know, they can make it happen. People can be productive. Um, you just have to do things in a different way. Yeah, for sure. Everyone's like, oh, we can't. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, like, oh, how do we do this? <laughs> we totally can't. Or my favorite is like, right. oh, that meeting really could have been an email. Like, <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Um, we suffer from that at Ameriforce Media a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it is it is what it is. Hey, Lila Quintiliano. Hi, Lila. Says, Hi. Hey, girl. And hey, to Kat. Happy Military Saves Month. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. The challenge. Military save. We'll throw all the links in. We'll just love on everybody. Okay. Uh, Military Saves Month. Uh, go check them at mm, militarysaves.org. We did an episode with yeah. Lila just a couple of weeks ago. So we can pull that back up too and show you guys um, and chat all about taking the Military Saves Challenge um, or pledge. And then Kathy King. Hey, Kathy. Seeing lots of friendly Hi. faces today. 
Kathy's up in Pennsylvania. Oh, so fun. Um, okay. Let's talk about Camp Lejeune and also getting plugged in to your local community. Because I think you and I see very uh, eye to eye on this um, mm -hmm. kind of aspect of military life. Um, I wouldn't say that there are yes. two like hardcore camps or like lines in the sand, like I will or will not assimilate to my community. Right. I think it's usually just circumstantial mm -hmm. and uh, what's going on with you personally sometimes too. But right. I will say in my experience, the more quickly I try to get plugged in, the more mm -hmm. successful I am physically, mentally, emotionally during and after that duty station. Um, so can right. you talk to me a little bit about um, how you went about getting plugged in sure. in Jacksonville? Well, first, let me admit, I'm a super fan girl of Jacksonville. So much so that I named my puppy Onslow after Onslow you County, did. North Carolina. That's right. <laughs> you don't and hear I that often. And you don't hear that about Fayetteville either, honestly. So... <laughs> There's, there's a, there's right. a thread here that you guys should follow. Yeah. <laughs> now some people might be confused. They're like, how could you possibly like it there? Uh, it was my first duty station. I moved there when I was 19. Um, he left immediately for training and then nine 11 happened. Mm -hmm. So our, our four years there, he was pretty much gone. Then the Marine Corps sent us a few other places and it was really my introduction to the military. So I got a job immediately working at a fitness center um, as I mentioned, he was away a lot. Those girls really helped me to figure out, okay, how do you do this when you're 19 years old, you're in the South when you're originally from New Jersey, <laughs> which is full of malls. There's no shopping in Jacksonville. Um, and, and I realized that location didn't matter if you find a support system. So, uh, we had a young son at the time. I got really involved in his activities. I was um, a teacher's assistant for CCD at church. I was a soccer uh, volunteer. Uh, I was on the PTA. I heavily volunteered for the Marine Corps Family Readiness Program. And so all those months he was away, I didn't feel alone because I had all these different networks I had built up. So, you know, we moved uh, two more times to different duty stations and it was time to make a decision. We had orders to San Diego. And I begged him to get them changed so we could go back to Jacksonville, which a lot of people are confused by that. Um, so we moved back there. I worked for the local newspaper. I volunteered for the Civic Affairs Committee. I could literally go into any store and I knew somebody, um, locals, not just mm -hmm. the military people who were stationed there. Um, and, but what's, but what made me sad is I would go to a lot of these, um, events, whether they were for the newspaper or just for my own knowledge. And I was often the only military spouse there. I think a lot of times, you know, you're almost in a bubble. Um, you get stationed somewhere, it looks temporary. You don't want to exhaust your energy digging in cause you're going to leave. Um, and I found when I did that somewhere that not only made me miserable about the Marine Corps, but it impacted my marriage because I had nothing of my own. You cannot only exist for your husband's career. That is depressing. You owe it to yourself to not wait till the 20 year mark when they get out to start living your life or five yeah, years. However yeah, it's long. my turn thing. Yeah. Yeah. And we need these towns to the only way we're going to change the stereotype about spouses is by showing up to things. Mm -hmm. um, it's a two-way street. We talk a lot about employers who are fearful to hire us, but if we don't put ourselves out there and in front of them and prove to them, look, we're intelligent, we have degrees, we can multitask yeah. like no other, um, how are they gonna know? How, mm -hmm. how is anybody gonna know us? Um, so uh, it was really important to me. I still have a lot of those connections. Um, and I cried hard leaving <laughs> Jacksonville, no. <laughs> and I'm still hoping we get back there someday. Uh, I can, even though I'm from New Jersey, and you know, when you're from Jersey, you're really like Jersey's dug in. You're definitely Jersey. I, yeah. <laughs> North Carolina is is home to me uh, forever, and and I just I miss it a lot. I I feel the same way about so many things that you said, and honestly, our stories like totally align. Like I, this was our first duty station. I was like, for, well, I came here not. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to say not willingly. Of course, I was, I did it on my own. But I was <laughs> not excited. Over. Yeah, I was not excited about it. Let's just say that. But like, 
once I got here, and I was here for about six months, and then he was leaving, and, you know, I'm like, oh, crap. Like, I don't know anyone. I don't know yeah. how to do the Army, you know, and just right. kind of was right. kind of, like, not feeling that whole world. Like, that just didn't seem like something I wanted to be a part of. I now realize that was a little naive, but, you know, whatever. Um, right. But, yeah, I, like, dug right in, you know. It was volunteering. Yeah. It was getting random jobs. It was, like, going to, you know – some uh, church hopping even, right? Like finding new gyms, yeah. things like that. Like you have to, you have to get out of your house. Not now. Don't do it. Yeah. Now. But when you, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you <laughs> see like everything. <laughs> yeah. That's, it applies to everything. When you can yeah. get out <laughs> right, <laughs> or make the right. friends now while you can. Um, another thing that you hit on that I just really, really resonates with me is you can't wait for your turn. Right. Um, It'll, it'll breed this underlying resentment that you will never be able to, like, swallow and force down, right? Like, it's just – and it's not your service yeah. member's fault. Right. It's, and it's not fair to you to, to, to be miserable. No. I mean, it's easy to be miserable. I, I, I will admit I had a very much love-hate relationship with the military. Yeah. Uh, there were times where I was moto wife. I had my T-shirt on and – um, I was trying to convince everyone to get involved in everything. And yeah. then there were times I did recruiting duty. I hated recruiting duty. Mm. Um, nine months into recruiting duty, it, you know, ironically. So I, I, I was really involved in our unit, but I wasn't sure our marriage was going to survive. Yeah. So I had these conflicting things going on and I had to have some self-talk. Yeah. Like you are self-inducing your misery right now. Mm. Um there are so many programs and resources out there. I know we talk about resources a lot, but they're for everything. If you're not into the spouse club thing, don't do the spouse club thing. There's 15 other things. There's yep. amazing nonprofit organizations. Hiring our heroes. They have yes. chapters everywhere. They need volunteers. Um, so I, I think your next best friend is waiting for you at a duty station somewhere. I think you can build up your resume in formal and informal ways. Um, and it, it was looking back, there's a lot of experiences I wish I would have done differently. Um, so uh, seize it and, and, but give yourself some grace. Um, I, if you're wanting to have a pity party right now, have a pity party. Right but don't do a good it time too long. <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, it, these are hard times. Yeah. Um, but, but we're no stranger to that either. Right. Uh, I, I just, I, I think for the spouses alone, isolating them specifically. Um, they're such selfless people. And, but I, I see them, a, a lot of spouses where I would like go to the grocery store. My husband was away and I'm walking around in a fog, a very sad fog. I felt alone. You can be in a room full of people and you can feel alone. And so I would encourage all spouses, no matter what stage they're at, figure out what their one thing is and hold on hard to that and go after it. And maybe it's not going to come to you easy. Maybe it's not going to be straightforward. You're going to have to change your path a lot. But keep at it, and it will happen if you really want it to. That's awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. One thing, too, that I noticed, and I wonder if you uh, did also as well. Like, so you mentioned, you know, being the only spouse at a civilian event or, you know, a town hall meeting or, you know, whatever it was that you were involved in. Um, I also have noticed when I go to things that are local that I'm plugged into, um, sometimes yeah. the the local community is like, how do we reach the military community? <clears throat> Usually it's right. marketing stuff. Um, and I'm like, well, yeah. okay, don't do this, this, and this, right? <laughs> but um, we're real right. people. We're in your community. Like, because there's yeah. this conception that we live on the base and that we don't right. don't mingle. Well, it's because we don't mingle, right? right? Like, so it's, it's right. kind of this right. catch-22. You've got a community around you that um, mm -hmm. probably either has stereotyped you maybe, or also really, 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 really wants to serve you and know you and love on you, but they don't know how to get to right. you because you're self-isolating, right? Or you're staying in your bubbles of military spouses. And again, there's time and place for that, right? But there, you can't also right. then sit back and say like, this community doesn't like the military or this community doesn't appreciate military right. spouses or won't hire us or whatever. Like there has Absolutely. to be a bridge built. Uh, we talk about this a lot, yeah. but I think military spouses specifically are in a really unique position to build those bridges. Uh, service members, mm -hmm. they're busy, they're gone, right? Like <laughs> right. you guys are home. You're, you're the one in the community. You're the one with the kids in the schools and, and whatnot. Um, so you have a unique chance there. So anyway, did you yeah, experience we can be that the too? Yeah, we the liaison for the military, mm. uh, you know, between the military and the 
I, I say go to your chamber of commerce events, mm -hmm. um, go to the PTA meetings, go to the board of ed, city council. Nobody was ever at those things. You need to know what decisions are being made for. And guess what? Wild card, the military might keep you there longer than you initially planned. Or your years. move might get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So try, trial and error different things. Maybe you're not into local politics, but maybe you would be. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't know unless you, you try. And it could create, open up an entirely different door for you of things that you didn't know you liked doing. Yeah. Um, so give yourself a chance, but also give that community a chance. Um, I, I can't even tell you how my perception of Jacksonville was one thing and then leaving there was a completely different. The people there were really so kind to wrap their hand, arms around the military families, um, especially in times of those frequent deployments. Mm -hmm. So get involved and get creative and then, and then drag someone with you to whatever <laughs> that thing you're doing is. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, well, since you lived in Jacksonville, would you? Can you tell us a little bit about like if I'm moving, if I have orders to Camp Lejeune yeah. or Jeune? Do you say Jeune, Lejeune? I do not. You do not. Okay. <laughs> Only when, I, when I'm around old, crusty Marine leaders, right. I might bang it out. Yeah, yeah. But no, uh, <laughs> I lived there for like seven years before I ever heard the Lejeune thing. Funny, I can't. Do I know. It. There's like active duty <laughs> kids now that are like, "What are you talking about?" Um, can you yeah. tell us a little bit about like maybe some of the areas that people like to live in that are popular for military yeah. families, like pros and cons, you know, give us the Millie overview of, for someone Absolutely. who might be headed there. Uh, so <laughs> to me, Jacksonville has the most gorgeous beaches. Mm -hmm. uh, the Jersey shore has nothing on North Topsail beach or Emerald Isle. Mm -hmm. uh, you could go, it could be February and you have a gorgeous day where you could hit up the beach and it's only about a 20 minute ride. Anzo beach is also located on Camp Lejeune. Uh, there are a lot of family activities. Our kids were involved in every single sport you could imagine. We lived out in town. Um, we always felt really safe in our neighborhood. Parkwood Elementary, shout out. Three of my boys went through it. Uh, <laughs> the different times we lived there. I really loved the schools and the teachers. Uh, we had a lot of purple programs mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, when, when our kids would move into the schools, they would pair them up with another student so they didn't feel alone at lunchtime or something like that. Um, shopping has slowly grown. Uh, my friend Lakeisha built a business there and she helped, she helped, um, revolutionize this thing to get the small businesses connected. Um, because before it felt really kind of disjointed, uh, though I think the mall is a sad mall. Um, but that's just cause I'm from New Jersey. Aren't all malls um, sad these days? Like isn't it kind of that the way it, of the mall? It's a one floor mall. It does not even have a Macy's. I just but don't know why they call it. Mall. Also Bianca, <laughs> nothing can compete with the nineties mall. Like there's no, right. like, sorry. True. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and walking the mall is like a hobby in New Jersey. It's oh the thing you do. Your hair gets bigger, your earrings get bigger, and then you wander the mall. But, sneakers. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we have four military bases in Jacksonville. Um, I actually was married on Camp Geiger, where the Camp Geiger Tigers come through um, after they go to boot camp. So um, every presence of church is there. We were Catholic. There was a Catholic church, uh, though primarily um, it's a Baptist area, but there's really something for everyone. And we're slowly getting a lot of cultural type restaurants. So we have Jamaican, Japanese, Thai food. Um, there's really no shortage, though the staple of Jacksonville is um, pulled pork and mm -hmm. their barbecue, which uh, I can't do sweet tea no matter how long I left there. That will never be my thing. Um, we have our own winery there. Um, we have a racetrack there. There really is just, and, and we're actually a short distance from a minor league baseball team. So there is a lot of different things to do. And Raleigh's only about a two hour drive. And then the mountains are in the opposite direction. So, and listen, uh, again, I'm a fan girl. Fayetteville's <laughs> only I like an hour places. and then yes, some change, hour and a half. And yes. we have baseball and we have tons of shopping. Yeah. So, I mean, really like, and we go to those beaches. That's we go to Topsail and, uh, you know, maybe a little Fort Fisher is usually kind of Wilmington area. It's fantastic. Um, oh, Wilmington's amazing. You could go see the Coast Guard ship. Um, and the greatest part of Jacksonville is the cost of living. Yeah. Um, having lived in the north and then going to the south, we were able to buy our first home when we were 21 years old. Mm -hmm. um, 
it, it was a gorgeous first home to raise our son in. And I don't think we could have done that anywhere else. So North Carolina is a really great place for home ownership. Agreed. Agreed. All right, friend. I always ask, oh, you know what? Let's do this. Um, okay. So what are, what are like maybe one or two hidden gems uh, that mm-hmm. like, and these can be, you know, small businesses or coffee shops or whatever in Jacksonville. And then I have one more question before we let you go. Okay. Coffee shop for me is definitely Biagio's. Uh, not only do they have chicken and waffles, but their coffee is amazing. Um, Martin Biagio, who owns it, has lived in Jacksonville forever. He owns like half the town, his background, his whole family's Italian. Mm-hmm. Uh, amazing food. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, this is kind of a totally lame thing, but I'm obsessed with the Lowe's food shopping store. <laughs> they have Eagle Globe and Anchors carved into cheese throughout the store, and they do a chicken dance for you every time you buy a rotisserie chicken. So, Stop it. That's amazing. Um, I never knew that. <laughs> you can also buy your liquor where you shop in North Carolina, right. which is amazing because in Maryland, that is not it. So I could get my Eagle Globe and Anchor cheese with my wine in one location. Um, a date night, ducks, uh, bar and grill, can't beat it, uh, amazing food. And, uh, you know, uh, actually we were supposed to on Saturday for our first time ever in our family history, go on a family vacation to North Topsail beach for a week. We were going to stay in a beach house. I had this whole dream built up of waking up on the deck, drinking coffee with my husband. We work really hard. We've worked really hard and it was going to be the first time ever that we had a formal vacation, but it was canceled. But that's what you we'll get, get for planning. <laughs> right? That's why you have to live never planning. And look what happened. I started exercising this year too. And I'm like, the gods are like, what are you doing, girl? You're supposed to be the chaotic, unorganized one. So, oh man. Okay. So I always ask every, I ask everyone this, um, to, it can be about the duty station, but I think for you, for, for sure, I'd rather ask this a little bit, a higher level what is one thing that you wish you had known, uh, maybe as an earlier military spouse or before this point in your your journey? Um, I I think my biggest lesson would be that it's okay if it doesn't go as planned. <laughs> um, it's just a total learning lesson the entire time. I mean, when, when my husband enlisted in 1998, we were not a wartime force. I had no military connection. And then as soon as I moved there, obviously 9-11 happened. And so I had to learn a new way. And I had to understand what it's like for him to be gone. And I, we had to make a conscious decision. Like, we committed to this career. This is our family's lifestyle. How can we make the best of it? So I... I wish I wouldn't have made it harder on myself by Mm -hmm. being so overwhelmed by all the unexpected because the whole 20 years was an unexpected. Um, And that translates to your everyday life, even once you leave the military. I mean, there was nothing in transition assistance about after your husband's been gone 20 years, how are you going to do in quarantine? Oh, really? They didn't have that class either? (laughs) No, they should probably consider adding that. So uh, where everyone thinks, okay, they retire, they're out. Now it's the easy part. No, actually, we're going through a lot of adjustments. Mm -hmm. He wants in on decisions all the time. And I was very used to just going with the doing it all my own way. Um, We're having to renegotiate a lot of roles. We're having to be used to being in a full-time space together, not just because of this. It is really hard. I spent two decades getting used to him being gone. And now I have to retrain myself. So, um, prepare for the unexpected and it's okay when it all goes to crap. That is like bumper sticker. That's a, yeah. I know I'm going to have that printed. That's amazing. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. At the end of the day, as long as you're, you know, doing right by your family, mm-hmm. everything outside those four walls doesn't really matter. Oh, I love that. Perfect note. Thank you, Bianca. I love you. Thank you. Stay Great safe. Great seeing you. I can't yeah. wait for us to be in a row house in D.C. again Yay! drinking wine. With all the wine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take care. Keep doing the amazing okay. work that you're doing, and we will talk again soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Have a good Okay, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed that chat. We went a little casual today. I am hoping to just uh, give you guys something to do for an hour. <laughs> 
<laughs> while you have your coffee with us, be sure to join us each and every week. We have these amazing guests every week, just like Bianca, to share their experience, to share how they are thriving and surviving this thing called the military life. So join us next week. We'll actually be chatting with um, another Boldly employee. Uh, she's a military spouse, and they are actually stationed in Italy. So we're going to do a check-in with them. Uh, show them some love, uh, show them some support and joy, and hopefully um, hear that all is well in their little corner of the world. So um, check out all of our resources if you guys need help with PCSing. We know a lot is still kind of up in the air right now with that, with the PCS hold. Um, <clears throat> so try to stay up to date and make sure that you have all of the information you need so that when it's time to start making decisions and moves, you can do so quickly and informed um, and in, from an informed perspective. So gomilly.com for tons of help there. Okay, everyone, until next week, take care, be well.